Today we're talking about Pixis Quest, a color-based adventure platformer that is heading our way in the somewhat distant future. I had the chance to sit down with R1K Games solo developer Ricky, where we covered the technical demo that just came out, and we discussed some other little details about this game as we slowly get closer to a launch date. So I can't wait for you to head into it. I can't wait for us to talk about this game more. So without further ado, it's time to get into the colors and talk about Pixis Quest. Tell me about, uh, is this this is your first game, correct? Yeah, I mean, so this is the, my first, like, game that I'll be releasing. Like, I've, you know, been doing game dev, like, as a hobbyist for, like, okay. a lot of years. Um, so I've worked on, like, a lot of, like, small projects that, you know, were never intended to be released. Um, and this is sort of the project where it's like, okay, I actually kind of know what I'm doing now, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's just a solo kind of project. There's nobody else on board. Yeah. It's just you. Yeah, it's just me. Um, in the future, you know, I, I want to hire a composer. But, you know, other than that, yeah, it's just me. And is there, is RK, or I'm sorry, it is RK1 Games, right? R R1K. R1K Games, okay. So where, I got to ask, where'd the name come from? Um, it's actually the, the username that I've been using since I got my first computer. Oh. And... Uh, I think two, 2000 um, and you know my name's Ricky so mm -hmm. it's kind of like R I K and it's just that 2000s trend of like let's put numbers <laughs> into things and the you know, when it, right and when it mm -hmm. came to like what am I going to name my my game company I spent like a lot of time thinking like trying to think of a name and then I was like you know I've been using this name for like 20 years might as well throw <laughs> it in there just go for it. Yep, perfect. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, what kind of, what drove you to actually make this game though? You know, um, I know you said you were a hobbyist, you've been doing it for a little bit, um, but what kind of made you want to step into the indie get dev world and kind of create this game specifically? Yeah, so specifically like my inspiration to uh, to make this game was last year playing, um, I played Shovel Knight and I played Celeste mm -hmm. and you know, it had been a couple of years since I, since I, you know, made a game. Hmm. And after playing those games, it was just kind of like, you know what, these are really good, and I just want to get back into it. And the Color Story game was actually the first full original game I made, probably 2006 around then. And you know, it was the first game I made. It was really simple was basically a Mario clone. And I always kind of liked the characters and wanted to do something, you know, better with it. Mm. So, you know, getting back into game dev, it was kind of like, I kind of wanted to Is get back to that project and, you know, do it properly. And since you started developing this game, how long have you been working on it so far? Uh, about a year. Mm. Okay, so since that year started, kind of what has changed in the development process? You know, what? so it's, has it evolved? Has it gotten drawn back? Have kind of the creative style of it changed at all? What's kind of the biggest thing that's transformed since you started? So, like the, kind of like the core idea has really stayed the, stayed the same, which is basically this idea of like uh, having abilities based on colors and then having color based mana and then um, absorbing color mana out of enemies like that's kind of stayed the same but uh, I kind of simplified it a little bit like mm -hmm. originally there was going to be you know six different colors of mana there's going to be red orange yellow green blue purple mana and that in practice was a little confusing to mm -hmm. keep track of um so i you know i dialed it down to three uh three primary colors and then if you wanted to use an ability that's a secondary color it just uses you know the two primary components yeah uh, of it um so like in in those like in some ways like that it's been simplified a little bit mm -hmm. uh in terms of like the scope the beginning of the game is gonna be structured like um you know, you have to get these abilities and, you know, this level and you have to, you know, that kind of stuff. And then the end of the game is kind of also kind of set in stone. But then there's like that middle part of the game yeah. that's still, you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, there could be 
10 levels in the middle there could be you know whatever mm. uh, so that part's kind of expanded and i've kind of originally it was going to be a lot more linear um but as i've been planning it it's evolved into more of like a, um kind of like how super mario world is where it's like you have a world map there's kind of like a main way to go through it but like you know you can find the secret exits and okay um, and that kind of stuff so with that in mind for the development side of it what has been so what what are you working this game on is it unreal is it unity is it something else yeah so i'm, I'm using a game maker studio okay and so with that in mind what kind of struck you as the most difficult thing when you started this game to now I think the most difficult thing is actually the the art. Mm -hmm. Even though I have more of an art background than a coding background, because um, I've you know I've made all the games I've made in the past have been pixel art. Mm -hmm. Never done like a uh, you know high res full painting type of art style in a game. Yeah, and uh, that's <laughs> proven to be a lot of work. Um, like one thing I didn't you know think about going into it is. If you're painting tile sets and you're painting in a sort of style where like the brush strokes are visible, you have to make sure those brush strokes like line up on the tile edges, mm -hmm. which is like kind of hard. <laughs> um, so that's been kind of a challenge. Um, it, yeah, pretty time consuming. Um, what kind of what drove you to that specific art style? Um, since you said you know pixel is your background to this point, what kind of what made you want to break out from that and create something like this? Yeah, so I mean, pixel art is my you know has been my background in, as far as like doing uh, game stuff. But mm -hmm. um, I'm also a painter. I you know I went to art school for painting. Okay. Um, not for digital painting, but so that's a little bit newer for me. I you know my background is in oil painting, but yeah. Um, I, you know, I kind of wanted to combine, you know, my background, um, as a painter with, you know, my game design experience and just kind of push myself to do that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense with the tech demo. Um, so it, it's smaller demo. It kind of is just there to showcase yeah. the core abilities themselves and just kind of the overall game as a concept. Well, what? With tech demos is always kind of a targeted goal for developers. What kind of was your targeted goal that you wanted to see from this demo? Yeah, so my main focus is really to make sure that Pixel feels really good to control, mm -hmm. um, especially for platformers. Like the way the character controls is like so important for like mm -hmm. how the levels are designed around that. Yeah. Uh, my main goal is to just you know get some you know feedback to see you know make sure. Controlling the character feels really good, really fluid. Yeah, and I've gotten some good, you know, some good feedback and some suggestions, just like little tweaks that I could make. And um, you know, I've been kind of taking you know, a lot of those suggestions and making little tweaks to how the character controls. And and yeah, it's been a pretty positive um, response in that way. What's been so? I know it's pretty early on, but has there been one kind of tweak that's really stuck out above everything else? Or is it just kind of, you know, smaller things that have been incrementally put into it? Well, yeah, the one tweak that I did, I think I just implemented it a couple days ago, um, was originally, it, whenever you killed an enemy, you would absorb the color, you know, the color mana would come out of them and you absorb it. Um, someone on Twitter suggested, you know, what if, um, instead of only when you kill an enemy, it was anytime you, you know, every time you attack an enemy. Okay. That, you know, you would gain some mana back. You know, it lets you use a lot more abilities. You know, it always kind of sucks, like, in a game when you get all these special abilities, but you only have enough mana to use them, like, three like, times. And, yeah. And no, then it's I... like you never use them, because it's like, well, I got to save my mana. <laughs> um, and since a lot of the abilities are really, like, platforming based, mm -hmm. you know, that had always been something in my head. Like, oh, I hope this doesn't, like, make it so... Players don't want to use their mana because, you know, they're going to run out and then they're going to have to kill enemies. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that was a really good change. Walk, so I actually didn't have this question written down, but it makes a lot of sense to kind of walk through it. Talk to me about how the mana works in the game um, and how it kind of translates into, you know, your abilities. Yeah, so um, anytime you 
attack an enemy now, mm -hmm. you'll gain mana based on whatever color that enemy is. So if the enemy's, you know, a red crab, you know, he'll give you red mana. Um, and there's three colors of mana. There's red, yellow, and blue, which are the primary colors. And you have abilities which are, you know, based on colors. So you have uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And so, you know, if you want to use a, a red ability, it'll use red mana. Um, and then for the secondary colors, orange, green, purple. If you use an orange ability, it'll use uh, red and yellow mana, which are the, you know, colors you mix together to get orange. Yeah. And I would assume um, those abilities are a little bit more powerful than the, uh, the base ones. Yeah. And also when you kill an orange enemy, you know, an orange mana thing will pop out of it, but then that'll split into red and yellow mana just to kind of like help the player understand like, you know, this is orange, but then it turns into, you know, these two. With the tech demo, how does that as a whole kind of translate into the actual game itself that you're creating? Yeah, it's it's more of just kind of like a demonstration of like, you know, this is kind of like what the game could feel like. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, you know, it's not an actual level or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like a, a demonstration area, but uh, the actual like in-game levels would be a lot um, much like, more polished in a way, almost. You say, right? Yeah, more okay. polished. Um, and I'll, and yeah, just kind of like laid out more thoughtfully. You know, it's like that thing if you're running through like a, a, a platforming level where you know you make sure you jump on one enemy and then the next enemy is spaced to where you would land on the next one and you know that kind of stuff like yeah obviously the demo doesn't like demonstrate that but with the tech demo the enemies that you see in there how much do they translate into the enemies you'll see in the game themselves yeah so they're all enemies that are going to be in the actual game yeah i think most of the enemies that are in the tech demo are going to be in the first level of the game um there's a couple enemies there's a couple more enemies that are going to be in the first level that are not 100% done, so that's why they're not in the tech demo. Talk to me about, I probably should have led with this one, but talk to me about the whole concept of building a platformer, um, because there's so many genres out there, and I know kind of platformers is a great place to start as a developer, um, just from you know the technical side of it, but outside of that, was there anything else that really drove you to this specific genre? Yeah, I platformers are just my favorite um, favorite game genre, I think, you know, because like I've never, you know, considered myself like a like a hardcore gamer or anything mm -hmm. like that. And not that platformers can't be difficult, but you know, I like the aspect of in platformers of like they're easy to pick up and put down. You know, anybody can really understand them. You know, a game like Celeste, which is like very you know skill, yeah, you know, technically difficult, but like the actual abilities and stuff is like really simple to understand you know i think i really like that facet of platformers mm -hmm. and then you know it's like especially as an adult you know i don't have like a ton of time to play games and it's like yeah. i like the aspect of like you know i can turn on shovel knight i can play one level and then just you know turn it off or you know whatever touch on without obviously spoilers or you know as much as you can can you kind of walk me through the story and the main character oh yeah so so at the start of the game, or the main character picks uh, is just kind of leading a, a regular life, and mm -hmm. she is visited by this kind of like this uh, this wisp, and it kind of tells her to follow her, or you know, tells her to follow it, and um, it leads her to this forest. And this actually, you know, this is kind of what the first level will play out. So it leads her to the forest, and it eventually leads her to this kind of like these uh, ruins of this temple, which is like the color temple where like the color mages you know used to do their do their stuff okay uh, and you know once she gets inside of there there's like a bunch of these uh little wisp things and they're actually like the spirits of uh basically the color mages that you know have passed and they basically teach her that you know she's a color mage as well and the you know she doesn't know it she wasn't raised as one because when she was like a baby the main villain, Earl Grey, wiped out all of the other color mages. Mm -hmm. Their spirits have been lingering around and kind of waiting for Pixa to come of age so that they could teach her how to use the magic and 
she could kind of avenge them in that way. Yeah, and then there's also like a little bit of a facet where like um, Earl Grey is also watching her and mm. kind of using her as part of his plan. Okay. Uh, but I, I can't really say more about that without spoiling. Yeah, no, absolutely. I have to ask, where did the where did the concept behind your, the main villain come from? Uh, that was an I, I, I just kind of like a brainstorming thing, like thinking, mm -hmm. you know, like what would the villain of a color based character be? Mm -hmm. You know, it's maybe something black and white, grayscale, and then um, I don't know. I just thought Earl Grey was well, obviously it's the T, but it's also like it kind of gives him like a semi regal, you know, background at the same time. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so with the art style. When I played the demo, for some reason whatsoever, I really got the concept of it was homage to old school Nintendo, and then it was also, for some reason, and I could be way off here, but I really felt like an anime vibe come from it. Did either of those two really impact the style of this game at all, or the characters of the story? I, yeah, I mean, I'd say like the character style, it's like semi-anime, semi-cartoon, mm -hmm. you know, Western cartoon. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like some of the big inspirations for like the art style was like uh you know like the ghibli movies um like the old school you know 2d animation disney movies yeah um even like the 90s pokemon uh anime you know it's like they all have that kind of like the art style where like the backgrounds are like you know you can tell they're hand painted mm -hmm. and you know there's like some brush strokes and stuff you can see but then you know obviously the animated characters are just you know flat you know outline and then uh you know filled in uh so that's kind of like the style that i'm you know trying to emulate a little bit talk to me about the roadmap moving forward so is there going to be you know a more in-depth demo anytime soon will the game have a kickstarter kind of walk me through the next few steps over the next few months for this game yeah so i my yeah my plan is you know before the end of the year to put out another demo that's more of a more of a proper demo, which would be basically the first level. And the first level is a little bit longer. Um, you'll get the, you'll collect the, your main weapon, and then you'll also get uh, the first three, the red, yellow, and blue abilities in that level. Um, so yeah, it's, that's, that's my plan is to kind of get that level built and put that out as a demo. More down the line, yeah, I do want to do a Kickstarter. You know, I want the game to be, you know, at least halfway done before I do that. Just more of a proof of concept before I, you know, ask people to donate and that kind yeah. of thing. Can you kind of circle back and tell me about, obviously, you know, not break down every single one of them, but kind of as an overarching thing, can you kind of touch on those briefly and explain the different, the different abilities, how players can use them, and kind of how are they all at your character's disposal at one point or can you only pick and choose certain ones to use at a certain time oh yeah so it's kind of, it's kind of like mega man where mm -hmm. you know uh you will find the abilities in the level mm -hmm. you're not beating a boss but just within the level you'll unlock the abilities and then once you've unlocked them they'll be in your inventory and you'll be able to just you know through the uh through the pause menu select at any time during the game um and you can have two equip simultaneously there's basically kind of two main types of abilities you have uh quick specials which are just the ones like you press a button and it does mm. whatever the ability is and then you have the focus specials which are um you hold a button and it, it does a thing as long as you're holding it so you can have one of each of those. Is there like a limit to when you can switch them out? Like say you're in the middle of like a boss fight or something and you realize one's not working, you hit pause and you switch them out? Or is that something you thought of at yeah. this point? Yeah, you can you can pause at any time, switch them out whenever you want. You could even, you could string abilities together. You could, uh, like there's a tornado ability, you mm -hmm. hold the button down and it, you know, it slows your fall speed. You could turn that on, do a double jump, and then there's like the, uh, the fire ability which is kind of like a you know a horizontal dash mm. you could do that while doing the horizontal you know while doing the tornado ability okay and you you could pause switch out the fireball ability for the bloom bouncer which is you throw a it's kind of like 
uh, Mario's Hat and Mario Odyssey. Mm. Throw a flower out, you, you bounce on it. So you can you can pause, you know, mid jump, switch out abilities to, you know, string together some kind of crazy jump. Okay. And then, so are the abilities? Are they all set at this point, and there's no more being added on, or are you kind of in the process of putting more in? Yeah, at this point, they're all set. Okay. Um, there will be the ability to upgrade some of them. You know, they're not going to totally change into different abilities. It's you know going to be kind of like um, you know maybe increase damage or in, you know increase um, or you know decrease MP usage or something like that, but. For the most, yeah, they're pretty much set. And how does, with the health in this game, is there, you know, a point where you can make your health larger? Or can, is that something that is effective in the game as well? Or is it kind of just set in stone from the beginning and that's not part of the process of the platformer? Yeah, there will, you'll be able to upgrade. Um, there's going to be basically collectibles in each mm -hmm. level. I'm not sure how many, you know, maybe five uh, collectibles in each level. And you'll be able to use those as currency at the town to kind of upgrade, um, you know, your max mana, uh, your max health. Uh, there'll be like a couple uh, weapon upgrades. Mm -hmm. And so you'll kind of be able to use those collectibles to purchase whichever upgrades you want when, whenever you want. So In the town, so is that kind of like in between levels you go there and you can like, you know, buy different, I don't know, armors, weapons, stuff like that? Yeah, the town will have like um, you can, yeah, upgrade. You know, buy your upgrades, mm -hmm. the little weapon upgrades, um, and then there'll be some like expendable items you can buy. Uh, you know, just to refill your your mana or refill your health, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Is that like? Is it? It's just a menu. Is it an explorable area within the game? Uh, it, is that still kind of in flux for you at this point? I mean, I'm not sure. I don't have the exact scope of how big it's going to be yet, but it'll be like a yeah, a little. Uh, side-scrolling section where you walk around and kind of, you know, kind of like a town in like Zelda 2 or yeah. Shovel Knight, like that kind of thing. Okay. With So with the levels themselves, I have to ask, you had mentioned you were trying to kind of add a little more depth to them as you go. While it is a linear game, just because it is a platform platformer, is there kind of a point where you're trying to open it up a little bit and make a semi-explorable world part of it? Or is there kind of the backtracking aspect where you'll go back and look at things and then go forward again. Um, is it kind of that style or is it really just kind of push forward and use it as a linear map to the end of your with your boss fight or whatever it may be? Yeah, so there will be uh, some degree of exploration involved. Mm -hmm. um, some of the levels will have like, uh, you know, secret exits. So like that might, you know, there might be a branching path like within a level. Mm -hmm. um, and then I haven't fully planned it out, but I do want to have like some things where you can go back to an earlier level with an ability you got in a later level, and that will open up, uh, you know, another path that maybe you know unlocks a, a you know a, a different route of levels. And you know, I don't want it to be like you know so cryptic where players are like you know, oh, I would have ne never thought I could go yeah. back and actually. So you know, like. People in the towns like might give you hints okay. about the thing. So yeah, there'll be like a little bit of um, uh, exploration in that way. Not on the level of like a Metroidvania, but you'd mentioned you're a year in, um, but you're not quite to the halfway mark of kind of getting this game released. Is there any? I know it's really hard to kind of lay down a release date or release time or even a window. Um, is there kind of something you're shooting for at this point to release the game? Um, I don't really have like a date that I'm shooting for yet. Basically, you know, I get home from work and I only have like a couple hours to work on the game. So it's like, yeah. it's kind of hard to like really pin down the last, maybe, let's see, kind of this summer I went through and I reprogrammed like, like almost the whole game engine. Okay. So like that, that kind of like set me back a little bit in my timeline. Um, like originally I wanted to have this, do this demo in like July and then know there's always like, something you know, that pushes you back yeah well you know it was like you know i learned a lot of coding stuff since i've started the game mm -hmm. and, and it was and so i just went back and i reprogrammed the whole character and with with a game like this so it's always kind of a difficult question to answer but as a solo developer it's first game on your own kind of segueing out there 
Is this something that's kind of a one-off project? You would just want to see how it goes and then kind of take a step back for a while? Or is this kind of the start of you kind of trying to push the development or and kind of create more games as a studio from here out? Is that something you've really even thought of at this point? Yeah, I mean, that's would definitely be something I would want to do. Um, I, I mean, at this point, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, kind of do it, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, pen, kind of pending how it goes. Uh, if I could do it more, you know, that would be really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one other question actually comes to mind, and uh, I know I keep adding them, but... No, that's cool. <laughs> with the engine you picked to build your game, so what kind of drove you to that one specifically outside of the others on the market out there? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the main reason is basically, like I said, like I don't have a... I don't really have like a coder background. Mm -hmm. um, game Maker has always been the... The software I've used it was it was the first game making software I discovered you know okay. when I was in high school um, so it's you know it's basic it's basically um, you know familiarity um, because you know before I started this project it had been a little while before you know since I'd worked on a on a game project so you know I kind of wanted to go into something that I had some familiarity with and that makes a lot of sense yeah, yeah. So with the development, is there kind of something you would want to like, for a developer who's just kind of starting out, something you would want to tell them like, you know, this part of coding or this part of the technical side of development or scope creep, whatever it could be, is there something you want to, would want to touch on with them? Yeah, I would definitely say for uh, game devs just starting out, like scope creep is like the biggest, <laughs> is the biggest thing because, you know, everybody comes into game making and they're, you know, they want to make like this super epic RPG mm -hmm. uh, that's you know has all these crazy features and uh, what you learn very quickly is no matter how small of a scope you set for yourself mm. it's going to expand uh, a lot it, it's gonna it's gonna be way bigger than what you think it's gonna be like I think when I started this project you know I was like yeah I'll just make a simple platformer and it'll be you know just kind of you know linear Mario mm -hmm. one style you'll just go through the levels and there doesn't even need to be that many levels or whatever. And then uh, you kind of start making it and it just grows into, uh, you know, something yeah. big you had anticipated. So set, set the goal small because it's going to be large no matter how small you set it. And there you have it, the color-based adventure that is Pixis Quest will be headed our way in the somewhat distant future. However, keep it in mind, make sure you go check out all of their social media pages linked below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the side quest for everything on the way in the near future, because without you, it's just not the same. So that is me, that is R1K Games, and that is Pixis Quest. Take it easy, y'all.